Welcome to worship on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter. We're so glad that you've joined us. However you're joining to worship with us, whether it be online or through the TV, we're so glad that you've chosen to take this time to spend it with us in this way. Um, and uh, if you're watching at any point um, during the actual uh, weekend of the 9th, Happy Mother's Day. Um, and that goes out to anyone who feels that they've served in a mothering way, to pretty much anyone, grandmothers, anybody. A happy Mother's Day to you as well. And so we begin this morning in worship with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the 10th chapter of Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with equity. Our second lesson, as it has been for the past several weeks, comes from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred minutes. The number of minutes in a year. The words you just read on the screen are lyrics from the song Seasons of Love from the Pulitzer Prize winning Broadway musical Rent, which debuted in 1996. It is based on the classic Puccini opera La Boheme, and is set in the early 1990s in a dingy, disheveled, loft apartment in New York City's East Village, and depicts young artists struggling to celebrate life in the shadow of drugs, poverty, and the AIDS epidemic of the 80s and 90s. Rent raises some controversial issues and subjects that the traditional church has a tendency to ignore and even condemn and or criticize. From gender identity, homosexuality, drug addiction, HIV and AIDS, and flat out rebellion and chaos. I have had the privilege to see Rent live on stage five times, and the message of the show is one that has gotten me through some hard times in my life, especially that theme song, Seasons of Love, which invites us into a place where we are to think about measuring life in terms of love before anything else. Today, as we have over the past several weeks in the Gospel readings, we receive a narrative of Jesus' teaching and sharing the love of God with his disciples and the people. And it's becoming ever clearer to the disciples and to the others to whom Jesus is speaking that this Jesus is no ordinary teacher. He says things others would never dare say. And when he talks, people listen. Now, one could argue that what Jesus offers in this text today is not earth-shattering, or nothing we haven't heard before, really, but it is life-changing because of its ongoing implications, even for us today, 2,000 years later. People in Jesus' day were quite concerned with what everybody else was doing. Were others following the law? Were they behaving properly? Were they doing anything scandalous? But Jesus told the disciples and tells us that you love one another as I have loved you. To put it another way, perhaps expand upon it, 
Simply love and treat others in the same way you wish to be treated. That same unconditional love that God gives us. It sounds so easy. Then why has nothing really changed in those 2,000 years? Why is the, the idea of loving everyone like God does so hard for us to follow? With love, the love of God that we receive freely, the love that we show ourselves and the love we show others is framed by what Jesus teaches here. Jesus further proclaims that he, that God has already chosen us, just like he chose the disciples, chosen to love us. So that part is already done for us. And because of that choice, that promise already made, the disciples and us are then appointed, called, to go and bear fruit, to share that love. So again, again, the questions become, why is it so hard for us to choose love over everything else? Choose love over hate. Choose love over judgment. Choose love over divisions. It's countercultural. It's not at all what we see in society, nor is sadly how society teaches us or expects us to act toward one another. Furthermore, I would say that no other thing is so countercultural today than not judging one another and simply loving each other in the same way we are loved. This societal norm has happened throughout history. But because of the worldwide media, the internet, and social media, we instantly see more of the world than at any other time in history. This means that the messages of division and all the myriad of things that are anything but love and acceptance are front and center, and in a way, are begging us as people of God to contradict. So imagine. What would a world look like where there is no judgment? Where we treat one another with love, exactly the way we are loved by God, unconditionally, and without division or judgment. There would maybe, just maybe, be no need for the social movements, such as Black Lives Matter, the Women's March, or gay pride events. This is not the case at our present moment in our history. The voices of love are drowned out more often than not. But dear friends, God is going to get God's mission done, whether we are a part of it or not. Now, it may not be on our timetable, or certainly not on our terms, but the hope lies in the love that Jesus declares that God presents to each of us. In our response, in what we say, and perhaps most importantly, in our actions, in and to the world around us. All is not lost because of Jesus, because of Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection. As I began today, I talked about Rent, but there is a deeper story behind the plot of the show. Rent was written by Jonathan Larson, a young man who himself lived in poverty and worked seven years to bring Rent to the stage. He desired to bring a story to life that showed how even when living against insurmountable odds, with love, anything is possible. The lyrics of that song strike me as a modern interpretation of Jesus' own teaching of love, forgiveness, acceptance, and unity. Now sadly, Jonathan Larson never saw the final fruits of his labor of love. Larson died at the age of 35 on January 25th, 1996, the very morning before Rent debuted in front of a live audience for the first time off-Broadway. And the show would very quickly move to premiere on Broadway just three months later due to the overwhelming positive response and immense following the musical received, a following that is still strong and growing today as the show will tour again later this year marking its 25th anniversary. Acknowledging that the world is often a hard and broken place to live, Jonathan Larson wrote Rent in direct response to that brokenness, the brokenness that he experienced and witnessed during his life. 
Jonathan saw the judgment. He saw the divisions. He saw people push to the outside, but yet still come together. There is a quote of his from just days before his death that reads, In these dangerous times where the world is ripping apart at the seams, we can learn from those who stare death in the face every day by reaching out to each other and bonding as a community rather than hiding from the terrors of life. What does this look like? What does coming together and setting aside judgment and hate look like? Perhaps the very love that Jesus commands us to show one another. As part of my now 18 years in ministry working with youth, I have helped lead dozens of fundraisers. And they are at the same time tedious, but almost always a true joy. On a particular Sunday in a previous congregation, I found myself working alongside our high school youth as they offered a brunch fundraiser for their upcoming journey to the then 2018 ELCA Youth Gathering. While I was standing nearby and toward the end of the morning, a woman who identified as someone experiencing some level of homelessness and who was a familiar face in the congregation because of the ministry they did with that population in Madison, came to the buffet line. And I overheard her say, oh, I don't have any money on me. And I don't remember which, which youth said it, but without a moment's hesitation, more than one of them said to her, that is just fine, we will still be happy to feed you. She smiled the biggest smile I had ever seen and happily filled her plate with the food she needed. That was love. There was no judgment placed upon this woman. She wanted, she needed to eat. And those young people didn't look the other way. They invited her in. They invited her to the table. They treated this woman, who I can assure you was nothing like them, with the same love they themselves wished to receive. Choosing love is not something we do. It isn't even something we have to do. Jesus makes clear that just as Jesus chose the disciples, God has already chosen us. God has already chosen to love us. For us, it is a way of living that is in response to that boundless love for the world, a world we are a part of. God wants us to be in relationship with one another, in open relationship, a relationship not filled with judgment or division, but one that is centered on treating one another with respect and love. With love as our driving force, we should be compelled to meet others no matter where or who they are and plant the seeds, bear the fruit of God's love that truly never ends. God's love overflows for us. The love that God gives us fills up to the very top, but doesn't stop there. We respond to that love by then, by then taking that love and sharing it with one another, because God's love for us keeps coming. It does not end. To provide another visual, it's kind of like a fountain. Water is added, and when, and when a water fountain is turned on, the water flows freely through the fountain and down, back into a pump where it circulates back up and through repeatedly. God's love for us does the same thing. It con it's constantly flowing in, through and with us over and over and over again. This is most certainly true. Amen.
Together with the whole world, let us now come together and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear and answer in steadfast love. Creating God, the earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love, so that by their song, all creatures of land and sea and sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join with them in praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons but with undying love. 
Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lowly. Be present with all those who are sick or suffering. This day we especially pray for all of those in India and all of those caring for all of those who are still battling COVID-19. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us towards life-changing responses to those needs in our own communities. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember with thanksgiving each and every day those who shared your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is that time in the worship service and when we do worship in person that we would normally share the peace and also pass the offering plate. Both of these things are still on hold during this pandemic, but the spirit is still alive. And when we share that peace, and then when we come to the Holy Communion table, we come together as one body, as equals. Even those we may disagree with, we still share that peace and we share that meal together. If you're so inclined, we do continue to ask you continue to send your offerings into the church. You can do that by mail to the church office. You can also donate online through our website as well. And so we pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Move us by your spirit to reach out to others with the peace of the Lord and seek reconciliation with those who differ from us so that we can come to your table in unity. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
And so now I have the privilege of bringing to you today's children's message. So today's lessons, both our second lesson from 1 John and the Gospel lesson, all talk about God's love. And God has plenty of love to go around. So what I have here in front of me is I have a glass of water, well, I have a glass with some water in it. And there are these marbles that are all around it, all of different shapes, sizes, and colors, kind of like all the people in the world. We all come in different shapes, sizes, colors, everything. And so let's say that the marble I have in my hand right now represents you. And the water in the glass represents God's love. So if I place you in the glass of water, you are surrounded by God's love. But guess what? There's more room in here. So perhaps some of these other marbles are your family and friends, the people that you see every day, your teachers, every, everybody that you come in contact with in the world. And they get added, and they too are surrounded by God's love. But you know what else is happening? The more I add, the water is actually coming out of the glass and overflowing because we could go on and on and see no matter how many we add, they're still surrounded by God's love, but then it goes further because we're all surrounded, but then as we get engulfed in God's love, there's nowhere else for it to go but out of us. So the water starts to overflow and now it gets all over all the people that are also on the outside of the glass and all those people that you may not know in the world, they receive God's love too. And we could keep doing this and doing this and doing this because in fact, God's love can handle more and more and more. And even when it overflows, it lands on all of those. It lands on all of the people. God's love can't be contained in this glass. God is much, much bigger than this small glass of water. And God's love is big enough for everyone. So now receive this benediction. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.